pay close attention here because I'm going to work two problems back to back that are pretty much the same problem but seeing how they're related and seeing that they really are the same problem I think will help you uh, with a more general situation. This problem says that the table shows patient data for red-green color blindness in one doctor's office and M here means male and C means colorblind so for instance um, there are 42 colorblind males in this doctor's practice there are uh, 591 uh, non-males that aren't colorblind in practice there are a total of a thousand patients in this one doctor's office and we want to calculate these probabilities the first thing we want to calculate is the probability of a, of a patient in that doctor's office being colorblind. So you look in the colorblind row and you see that there are 46 of them out of a total of a thousand patients. So the probability, and we'll write this as a decimal to three decimal places. That's what the instructions say, although I didn't write that down. So the probability that a patient in this doctor's office is colorblind is 0.046. The basic probability principle, 46 out of 1,000. Part B says the probability M complement intersect C complement. Now that is the probability that a patient is not male and is not colorblind. So not male is this column, not colorblind is this column. So there are 591 patients that satisfy that condition of not being uh, male and not being colorblind. Again, out of the total 1,000 patients in that doctor's practice. And if you divide that out in around three decimal places, you'll get 0.591. The third probability we're asked to calculate is the probability that a patient is male given that that patient is not colorblind. That's a conditional probability and the condition is that the patient is not colorblind. So we're not interested, given that condition, we're not interested in the colorblind patients. And of course that total is meaningless if we take out the colorblind patients. So I reduced sample space, what I call the reduced sample space, consists simply of that row of non colorblind patients. So given that the patient is not colorblind, the probability of that patient is male, there are 363 male patients out of, remember we've reduced the sample space now so there aren't a thousand anymore, there are only 954. And if we want to write that as a decimal to the nearest 1,000, three decimal places, we would end up with 0.381. Now, I want to change the problem up just ever so slightly and make it say this. There's a subtle difference here. This time it says the table shows frequencies for red, green, color blindness in one doctor's office. Frequencies. These aren't total number of patients now. These are frequencies. 
Well, the frequencies are just the probabilities. And how did they come up with them? Well, they just took the numbers in the original data and changed the percentages. If you take 42 out of 1,000 and make a decimal out of it, you get 0.042. If you take um, 4 out of 1,000 make a decimal out of it, you get 0.004, and so on. If you take uh, 363 out of 1,000 and make a decimal out of it, you get 0.363. So what they did is they took the raw data and gave it to you as a frequency table. And that might happen. You might not be given the raw data. You might be given that frequency table. And you could still be asked those same three questions. So let's just run down it again. Just pretend we're starting over. What is the probability of a patient in that doctor's office being colorblind? Well, before we took the number of colorblind patients, which was 46, and divided by 1,000, but they've already done the division for you. So they did a lot of the work for you. They just went ahead and put the answer right there for you. And you don't have to do the division. So in that sense, this problem is much easier. They did the division for you. The probability of being a colorblind patient in this doctor's office is 0.046. Okay, let's see what happens with the second question. What's the probability that the patient is not male and not colorblind? Well, not male is this column, not colorblind is this column, and again, they've already been nice to us. They have done the calculation for us. So you get 0.591. And you might notice, again, if you don't already, these are the same answers we're getting over here because it's the same problem. They just did some of the work for you and, and wrote the problem differently when they gave it to you. But you need to see that connection. The third problem is the one that's going to cause you problems if any of them do. And that's when you get a conditional probability question out of this. If they give you raw numbers with conditional probability, we've done enough of those that we don't really have any trouble with that. But when they give you frequencies, you've got to be careful. Notice that this is a conditional problem we've given that the, the uh, patient is not colorblind. So just as before, we knock out the things that don't apply and get the reduced sample space to be the row including the non-colorblind people in that doctor's practice. And you're saying, okay, what's the probability now that this patient is male? You're tempted to look at the male column or the male entry here, the male column that only has one entry now, and say that the answer is 0.363. But that's, that's a calculation done and if you go back and look at it, that's a calculation that was done out of a thousand when you had a thousand patients. You don't have a thousand patients anymore because you've reduced your sample space. So what you've got to realize is this 0.363 is taken out of that 0.954. It's a percentage of that. In the same sense that I couldn't just take this out of a thousand for the conditional probability of asked before, I had to take it out of this because I've reduced my sample space. So again, it's a little tricky. So instead of getting 0.363 for the answer, when I do a conditional probability with frequencies, I've got to divide by the total, which is basically just telling me that I'm working with the reduced sample space instead of the original sample space. If I wrote 0.63363, I would be it's my final answer. I would be assuming I still had a thousand patients in the sample space or some number, whatever it would be, but I don't. And if you do that as a decimal, you get 0.381, which again is the same answer we got before when we were using the actual raw numbers instead of the frequencies. So the moral of the story is when the frequencies are given to you, the answers are actually easier to get until they start asking you questions about conditional probabilities. Then you've got to, to jump and think about it. You've got to jump over to thinking about this as a reduced sample space. You're not dividing by one. You're dividing by whatever that number is, at least in this case. 
If that's confusing to you, you can always convert these probabilities back into raw numbers by multiplying by whatever it takes to get rid of all the decimals. You can see here everything has three decimal places. So if you multiply everything in here by a thousand, it would take you back to, to raw data. And then you could do it the way maybe you're more comfortable with. So I don't know if that's helpful or harmful to point that out, but whenever you get a conditional probability problem, and you're working with the frequency table instead of the raw numbers, you're going to end up doing a division. You're not going to read it right out of the table. And you can go back to raw numbers by multiplying everything through by whatever it takes to get rid of the decimals if, you, if that makes you understand the process better.